Assalamu alaikum my name is Nawan Ahmed and my group member is Mr Fahad Abdul Haq and the topic of our presentation is plasma with uh, technological applications The main contents of this presentation are an introduction to plasma the properties of plasma some complex plasma phenomena an uh, introduction to artificial plasma the applications of plasma technology and the future aspects of plasma technology <clears throat> now i'm going to describe what plasma actually is it is a state of matter similar to gas in which a certain portion of the particles are ionized the basic premise is that heating a gas dissociates its molecular bonds rendering it into its constituent atoms the further heating leads to ionization turning it into a plasma containing charged particles positive ions and negative electrons the presence of a non negligible number of charge carriers makes the plasma electrically conductive so that it responds strongly to electromagnetic fields plasma therefore has quite different properties unlike those of solids liquids or gases and therefore it is considered a distinct state of matter we can also loosely define plasma as an electrically neutral medium uh, and we can say that the overall charge of the plasma is uh, uh, nearly zero now moving on towards the properties of plasma there are four main properties which determine the material existence of plasma that is the degree of ionization the temperature ranges the potential ranges and the magnetization property The degree of ionization can be defined as the ratio of the number density of ions to the sum of the number density of ions and the number density of neutral atoms. The degree of ionization of a plasma is the proportion of atoms that have lost or gained electrons and it is mostly controlled by the temperature. Even a partially ionized gas in which as little as 1% of the particles are ionized can have the characteristics of a plasma. that is they respond to magnetic fields and have high electrical conductivity moving on to the next property plasma temperature is actually a measure of the thermal kinetic energy per particle very high temperatures are usually needed to sustain ionization which is a defining feature of a plasma the degree of plasma ionization is determined by the electron temperature relative to the ionization energy At low temperatures however ions and electrons tend to recombine into bound states or atoms and the plasma will eventually become a gas. Plasma temperature is commonly measured in kelvins or electron volts. Based on the relative temperatures of the electrons, ions and neutral particles, plasmas are classified as thermal or non-thermal. Thermal plasmas have electrons and the heavy particles at the same temperature and they are in thermal equilibrium with each other. Non-thermal plasmas on the other hand have the ions and neutrals at much lower temperature uh, normally at room temperature whereas the electrons are at much higher temperature Now I'm going to give you a little detail about the potential ranges of plasma and the plasmas are very good conductors of electricity and thus uh, the electrode potentials play an important role The potential as it exists on an average in the space between the charged particles is called the plasma potential or the space potential. If an electrode is inserted into a plasma, its potential will generally lie considerably below the plasma potential due to what is termed a Debye sheet. The Debye sheet is a layer in a plasma which has a greater density of positive ions and hence an overall excess positive charge. that balances an opposite negative charge on the surface of a material with which it is in contact the thickness of a such a layer is several debye lengths thick a value whose size depends upon the various characters of plasma such as uh, temperature and density etc the debye length is actually the distance over which the significant charge separation can occur the good electrical conductivity of plasma makes their electric fields very small This results in an important concept of Poisson neutrality which says that the density of negative charges is approximately equal to the density of positive charges over large volumes of the plasma. But on the scale of the Debye length there can be a charge imbalance in this special case double layers are formed 
the charge separation can extend some tens of tibial lengths. And now I'm going to talk about the magnetization property of plasma. A plasma is said to be magnetized if it contains a magnetic field strong enough to influence the motion of charged particles. An important mathematical relationship is shown on the slide uh, which states uh, that according to a quantitative criteria that a particle on average completes at least one gyration or rotational motion around the magnetic field before making a collision. Uh, magnetized plasmas are an isotropic meaning that their properties in the direction parallel to the magnetic field are different from those perpendicular to it. While electric fields in plasmas are usually small due to the high conductivity, the electric field associated with the plasma moving in a magnetic field is given by the relation shown on the slide, uh, which is not affected by the Debye shielding, whereas Debye shielding is actually the damping of electric field caused by the presence of mobile charge carriers. Now I'm going to talk about some complex plasma phenomena. First of all is filamentation. You may observe styrations or string-like structures in many types of plasma like the plasma balls, the aurora, the lightning bolts, electric arcs, solar flares and the supernova remnants. They are sometimes associated with larger current densities and the interaction with the magnetic field can form a magnetic rope structure. High power microwave breakdown at the atmospheric pressure also leads to the formation of filamentary structures. The second phenomenon I am going to talk about are the shocks or double layers. The plasma properties change rapidly within a few debilance across a two-dimensional sheet in the presence of a moving shock or a stationary double layer. Double layers involve localized charge separation which causes a large potential difference across the layer but does not generate an electric field outside the layer. Double layers separate adjacent plasma regions with different physical characteristics and are often found in current carrying plasmas. They accelerate both the ions and the electrons. Now the third phenomenon I'm going to talk about are the electric fields and circuits which involve plasma. The quasi-neutrality of a plasma requires that plasma currents close on themselves in electric circuits. These circuits follow Kirchhoff circuit laws and possess a resistance and inductance. These circuits must generally be treated as a strongly coupled system with the behavior in each plasma region dependent on the entire circuit. It is a strong coupling between the system elements together with non-linearity which may lead to the complex behavior. Now electrical circuits in plasma store inductive energy and should the circuit be disrupted for example by a plasma instability, the inductive energy will be released as a plasma heating and acceleration. This is a common explanation for the heating that takes place in a solar corona. A corona is a type of plasma or atmosphere of the sun or other celestial body extending millions of kilometers into space, most easily seen during a total solar eclipse, but it is also observable in a coronograph. The critical ionization velocity is the relative velocity between an ionized plasma and a neutral gas, above which a runaway ionization process takes place. The critical ionization process is quite a general mechanism for the conversion of kinetic energy of a rapidly streaming gas into ionization and plasma thermal energy. Critical phenomena in general are typical of complex systems and may lead to sharp spatial and temporal features. Ultra cold plasmas are created in a magneto optical trap or MOT. A MOT is a device that uses both laser cooling with magneto optical trapping in order to produce samples of cold trap neutral atoms at temperatures as low as several microkelvins, two or three times the recoil limit. Uh, uh, after the uh, magneto-optical trapping, another laser is used to ionize the atoms by giving each of the outermost electrons just enough energy to escape the electrical uh, attraction of its parent ion. One advantage of ultra-cold plasma is their well-characterized and tunable initial conditions including size and electron temperature. By adjusting the wavelength of the ionizing laser, the kinetic energy of the liberated electrons can be tuned as low as 0.1 Kelvin, a limit set by the frequency bandwidth of the laser pulse. The ions inherit the millikelvin temperatures of the neutral atoms but are quickly heated through a process known as disorder induced heating or DIH. This type of non equilibrium ultra cold plasma evolves rapidly and displays many other interesting phenomena. 
plasma with a significant excess of charge density or in the extreme case is composed of a, only a single species is called a non neutral plasma in such a plasma electric fields play a dominant role uh, examples are charged particles beams and positron plasmas a dusty plasma contains tiny charged particles of dust which are typically found in space and they also behave like a plasma a plasma that contains larger particles is called a grain plasma now i'm going to hand over the presentation to mr fahad abdul haq who will provide you on the details of artificial plasma and the applications of plasma hello my name is fahad abdul haq and i'm going to tell you about the how the artificial plasma is generated and how they are categorized most artificial plasma is generated by the application of electric or magnetic fields plasma generated in laboratory using say different settings and for industrial use can be generally categorized by the type of power source used to generate the plasma it may be dc rf and microwave and the pressure they operate at it may be vacuum which may be more than 10 milli tor or 1 pascal moderate pressure to tor or to 100 pascal or atmospheric pressure 760 tor or 100 kilo pascal the degree of ionization within the plasma may it may be fully partially or weakly ionized the temperature relation within the plasma thermal plasma non thermal plasma and cold cold plasma and the electrode configuration used to generate the plasma the magnetization of particles within the plasma magnetized both ions and electrons are trapped in the lamar orbit by the magnetic field it may be partially magnetized like the electron but not the ions are trapped by the magnetic field or it may be non magnetized like magnetic field is too weak to trap the particles in the orbit but may generate lorentz force now i'm going to tell you about the application of the plasma uh, plasma had a wide range of application it includes commercial applications transportation applications sterilization applications and isotope separation in commercial applications high efficiency lighting manufacturing of semiconductors for home computers TVs and electronics flat panel displays and and the other main use of plasma is the plasma lighting the most prevalent man made plasma on our planet are the plasma in lamps these are primarily of two types plasma based light sources fluorescent lamps and high intensity arc lamps fluorescent lamps have wide spread within homes and uh, industry and commercial setting and then is the neon signs we see it everywhere on the shops in the markets and is a plasma arc welding it is used in variety of industries for welding purposes plasma also been used in transportation plasma sprays of surface coating for temperatures and wear resistance treatment for wings and exhaust compounds and ion thrusters for space flights is are very important uses of plasma for the space sciences another important use of plasma is a isotope separation plasma source and magnetic field controls the gravitating charge plasma particles are important for separation of stable isotopes for medical and industrial uses plasmas are also used for sterilization new one atmosphere plasma system make possible new method for surface cleaning and sterilization of food medicals and other applications whereas standard heat sterilization is time consuming and irradiation can damage material this new plasma technology has been shown to kill bacteria on bare surfaces in seconds to minutes in addition to destroy bacteria such plasma system also destroy viruses fungi and pores these systems also provide an environmental benzene methods for pre treatment surfaces one atmosphere plasma systems are now becoming available for various industrial applications now here are some future aspects of plasma plasma are used in plasma weaponry plasma power for different kind of vehicles and spacecrafts and plasma as a energy source for overcoming the energy demands in the future now that's all from the plasma thank you from the plasma technology association